Hello everyone and welcome to Ant Sleep, a whole youth social talk show series. My name is Tommy Licatese. For this multi-part series in which we discuss the lifestyles that can impact our sleep health, I have the pleasure of hosting endocrinologist Dr. Anastasios Meneses. Today we'll be discussing diabetes and sleep. Welcome to the program, Dr. Meneses. So, Thank you so much. Um, what is your typical patient like in your practice? As an endocrinologist, um, uh, the typical patients that we see in the practice are patients who have more or less some type of uh, hormonal imbalances. And the majority of those patients are usually uh, diabetics uh, patients. Diabetes is very prevalent in uh, the United States of America. Uh, almost 10% of our population has a diagnosis of diabetes. And uh, there is a big uh, percentage actually who have a diagnosis of prediabetes that eventually would become diabetic. And the majority of those people, 95% of those people are actually type two diabetics. The diabetics who uh, have, um, which, which associated with uh, obesity, which associated with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, uh, and other comorbidities. The idea here is that with type 2 diabetes, you develop, because of obesity, uh, uh, because of obesity, you develop insulin resistance, and it's the insulin resistance that really translates to all the other uh, comorbidities associated with, uh, uh, with type 2 uh, diabetes. So you mentioned that some of your patients have sleep apnea. What is the relationship between sleep apnea and, and diabetes? So when somebody has type 2 diabetes in itself, uh, so by itself, that is associated with disturbed sleeping pattern uh, without patient having a, a diagnosis of sleep apnea. And then usually that's related to the fact that people, when sugars are elevated, people need to get up to go to the bathroom. Uh, they have more uh, increased incidence of polyuria. Uh, they drink more, and uh, they really don't get uh, rested they don't get a rest of sleeping pattern associated with, uh, uh, with, uh, type, with the hyperglycemia. Now, when you have sleep apnea, uh, that sleep apnea, in addition to what uh, hyperglycemia cause, exacerbates that high sugar levels overnight because increases the hormone, the levels of a, uh, the hormone levels like cortisol, which uh, are contraactive or they, uh, they work against what insulin is supposed to do in the normal uh, me metabolic state, which is to uh, keep your sugars under normal uh, levels. So that's how um, uh, sleep apnea exacerbates hyperglycemia overnight. So if a patient has type 2 diabetes and their sleep apnea is untreated, what can happen? What are the effects? Cortisol is one of the hormones that are pretty much help us um, uh, deal with stress. So uh, under typical circumstances, our cortisol level increases in the morning to help us get out of bed and be able to go to work or go and exercise. And then cortisol usually decreases at the end of the day, at nighttime, relax and uh, eventually go to sleep. Uh, it's the sleep apnea uh, uh, that really makes those cortisol levels being high all night along our sleeping pattern. And eventually, because of a fatigue associated during the day due to sleeping deprivation, uh, our, our body tries to fight that fatigue by increasing cortisol levels. So one of the side effects of that is that uh, cortisol um, really uh, uh, goes into the liver and fights the action of uh, the insulin. And the other thing is what it does is it makes our liver uh, produces much more glucose even if we're not eating overnight. So you have to realize there is a dual, um, there's positive effects of cortisol. You want it to increase during stress, but you don't want it to constantly be increased with people like sleep apnea because in that case it has um, uh, severe metabolic effects, including uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and um, uh, weight, um, uh, cravings, increases cravings, and eventually leads actually after a while 
to what we call a chronic fatigue uh, syndrome because the patient is not sleeping well uh, after all this time. So can the treatment of sleep apnea help a person with diabetes help manage their condition um, or even help to prevent diabetes in the first place? Yes, uh, sleep apnea uh, in patients uh, who have uh, type 2 diabetes associated with obesity, uh, if you treat the sleep apnea, you can definitely um, uh, improve their glycemic control or even delay the progression of uh, uh, type 2 diabetes. One of the typical questions we ask our patients when they come in during our initial consultation is uh, if they have any sleeping issues. And if we see that questionnaire is, uh, there is uh, positive answers to that questionnaire, we usually refer to a specialist for a, a sleep apnea uh, test. I usually let uh, you know, the specialists uh, do their job and uh, treat uh, immediately the sleep apnea with um, uh, CPAP or with an oral device, depending on the level of and severity of the sleep apnea. From what I know, a, a lot of patients are not very uh, compliant with uh, the CPAP, so um, having an oral device uh, increases compliance and uh, prevents uh, apneic episodes and definitely will help uh, glycemic control at the end. Well, that completes this episode of Anne's Sleep, a whole youth social talk show series with Dr. Manessis. We encourage you to explore the rest of the episodes and visit wholeyou.com to learn more about sleep breathing disorder treatments. The sleep professionals in this video series teamed up with Whole U to spread healthy sleep education across America and were paid for their appearances.